In the private sector, we have FedEx and we have UPS, two very similar companies that will get your package where it needs to go. In 2002, UPS went all in on their slogan, what can Brown do for you? It's not my favorite slogan. FedEx has that nifty little arrow that they hide in the negative space between the E and the X. I only mention those because those are the two things that I immediately associate with each company, but I think we can dig a little deeper with our comparisons. While attending Yale University in 1965, Fred Smith wrote a now famous paper for one of his classes. It proposed some revolutionary new ideas involving transportation and delivering packages. The story that everyone likes to tell here is that his professor gave him a see on the paper and told him that those ideas would never work. Based on statements made by Fred Smith himself, I don't think that's what happened. It appears that those ideas weren't incredibly well thought out, nor was it the central focus of the paper, plus he didn't even remember what grade he got. But that paper did contain some concepts that he would further develop and use in establishing FedEx. I don't want to get too far into what the concepts actually were because, quite honestly, I'm no expert here, but it involved shipping packages on dedicated planes rather than putting them on commercial passenger planes, which was the standard at the time. That way the shipping can be done faster because they can make their own schedule rather than conforming to the one that was already in place by those passenger planes. There was also the idea of shipping everything through one central hub rather than directly between cities. I don't think it was necessarily cheaper to do it like this, but it was faster and that was their main concern. To get this thing running, he needed some serious cash. This is a little more involved than starting your typical small business. He needed a fleet of airplanes, and trucks, and other things. Starting FedEx required hiring 400 employees before they even made a single sale. Luckily, his family was rich. His father started these bus lines years earlier that eventually became part of Greyhound, so he had a $4 million inheritance to put toward it, which turns out was only a small percentage of what he needed. For the rest of it, he searched for investors. Some of them willing to lend him money, and some of them willing to buy a percentage of the company he was able to convince them through outlining his potentially groundbreaking delivery concepts, not to mention he had a pretty solid background for something like this. He had an economics degree from Yale combined with experience in the Marines as a pilot in Vietnam. He took his $4 million inheritance, combined it with the impressive $90 million he raised from investors, and started FedEx. And things were really bad at first. They reportedly lost almost $30 million in their first 26 months. Can you imagine that? All these investors relying on you, and after two years of work, all you've done is lose $30 million? Of course, these things take time, but holy cow. A big reason they were having so much trouble was an energy crisis, which started at the worst possible time for them. Fuel prices were through the roof, which obviously negatively affects a young shipping company. It made it next to impossible for them to turn a profit, and I think this demonstrates just how shaky things were. There was a point where they had a $24,000 fuel bill and only $5,000 available to pay it. If they didn't come up with the money, they couldn't continue operating. So in a desperate attempt to raise the money, Fred traveled from Memphis to Chicago to talk to some people about a loan. When he was denied, he became even more desperate and at the last minute changed his return flight to Memphis into a flight to Las Vegas. I think you can see where this is headed. He took that $5,000 to the blackjack tables. His mentality was was that the 5,000 wasn't enough to keep them running anyway, so if he lost it, they'd be in the same position. Might as well give it a try. Luckily, he did win enough money that night to pay the fuel bill. It didn't mean the company was saved, it simply meant they can continue delivering packages for the next week. But it got them through their immediate troubles and it gave them a little confidence boost. So just think about that. The fate of FedEx once relied on some games of blackjack. From there, they turned things around pretty fast. I don't think they would exist today if they didn't. 76 was their first profitable year, and by 1977, things were looking pretty good. Experience had made them more efficient, they were delivering more packages, and this is the year that the airlines were deregulated, which meant fewer restrictions, specifically in the size of their planes, and it just opened the doors so they can grow. This is where things started to take off. 
You, you get it? Take off. You can imagine all the different ways businesses can benefit from express shipping, and FedEx were the people to do it. They effectively started that industry and have always been a huge part of it. In 1978, they had a public offering, and this is interesting. By 1983, they reported $1 billion in revenue, the first company to ever do that in its first decade without any mergers or acquisitions. By 1985, they had doubled that to $2 billion. However, this one did include acquisitions. See, they started doing business internationally back in 1980 in Canada, and now we're acquiring companies to get their business established overseas in Europe and Asia. The international business ended up losing money for its first five years, and their answer was to buy Tiger International, who was a successful international cargo airline, also with well over $1 billion in revenue each year. Alright, they're pretty big at this point. <laughs> Let's shift over to UPS while pointing out some of the key similarities and differences. First off, they started 64 years earlier in 1907. I'm gonna go ahead and say the start was much more modest as well. Remember how FedEx was founded by a wealthy ex-military Yale graduate with $100 million, a fleet of airplanes, and 400 employees? Well, UPS was founded by a 19-year-old with six bicycles. His name was Jim Casey, and he would continue to be the leader of UPS for the next 55 years and involved in management until his death 21 years after that, which is actually a similarity. They were both started by one key person that essentially spent their life with them. Another key difference is UPS started by delivering telegraphs, but the popularity of the telephone reduced the demand for that, so they shifted over to department store deliveries. If you ordered something from the store, they'd offer to have it delivered to you that same day, and it was UPS who made that delivery. But then, by the 1950s, more people had cars and were just driving to the store to get their own stuff, which lowered the demand for these services, and UPS shifted again. This time, into the business that we know them for today, delivering packages for the public. They had actually started doing this as a side thing in Los Angeles in the 1920s, but now, in the 1950s, it became their core focus. So we can add that to the list. FedEx had a clear vision dating back to a college paper years before it even started, whereas UPS took a little time to get there. As far as international growth, they took two very similar paths. UPS started offering services in Canada in 1975 compared to FedEx, who did it in 1980. Then it didn't take long for either one to start focusing on the rest of the world, specifically Europe. They both did it aggressively through acquisitions, but price wars between the two to try to gain market share over there made it hard for either one to be profitable. FedEx was pioneering in their over overnight air delivery service, but then after less than a decade in the mid-80s, UPS was catching up to them. Before then, UPS had a much smaller air delivery presence, but I think we can say that FedEx really caused them to step up their game. One of the biggest differences that stands out to me historically between the two is how they've obtained their funding. Traditionally, UPS has been more exclusive and conservative in the way that they raise money. Consider this, before FedEx even started, Fred Smith was off security loans and looking for buyers. And then as soon as the company started looking attractive, after only five years of operation, they had an IPO on the stock market. Whereas UPS has typically handled things differently, their IPO wasn't until 1999, after 90 years of operation. Before then, the ownership wasn't offered to the public. In the very beginning, it was owned by the employees, and over the years, the shares were only offered to executives and their families and a very tight group of people. And the debt too. Historically, UPS has been very hesitant to take out debt, and most of their expansion over the years has been done by using their own earnings. Another thing is UPS has been much more unionized. And what about the retail locations? In 2001, UPS spent $191 million to purchase mailboxes, etc., which was a 4,300 location chain of packing and shipping centers that was soon rebranded as the UPS store. It was a quick way to have a massive retail presence and make their services more available. Then in 2003, FedEx answered with a very similar move. They bought Kinko's for over $2 billion, their biggest acquisition ever at the time, and quickly renamed them a couple of times until they were eventually all called FedEx Office. And probably the biggest difference between these two, as far as the public is concerned, is FedEx is known for their air deliveries and UPS is known for their ground deliveries. When you think of UPS, you think of a truck. When you think of FedEx, you think 
think of a plane. Not to say they haven't been competing in each other's territories for decades, but if you've seen Castaway, it wasn't a UPS plane. That's been the main difference over the years, but I have to say, after comparing some recent figures, these two are becoming more and more like each other. First off, which do you think is bigger? I'm sure you're having a hard time answering that because it's close. UPS is the 41st largest US company and FedEx is number 47. 72 billion in revenue compared to 65 billion. In 2018, UPS delivered almost 21 million packages per day, whereas for FedEx, it was more like 14 million. I wanna look deeper into the revenue sources, but they report their segments a little differently. FedEx separates their express and ground services because they use separate networks work, so this was the best I could do to match them up to provide a more direct comparison. It's not perfect, but I promise, the point comes across. It shows that when it comes to delivering packages in the United States, UPS is the clear winner. On the other end, international deliveries goes to FedEx. It's not only a higher percentage of their revenue when compared to UPS, it's just a higher revenue overall. They've spent over $4 billion acquiring a European delivery company called TNT Express in 2015, and that was their big attempt attempt to further grow their presence over there. When comparing the assets of the two, it's actually a little higher for FedEx. They report that they have more aircraft and ground vehicles than UPS. FedEx has about 56,000 more employees. Here's a big one operating income. It's been noticeably higher for UPS, giving them significantly higher operating margins. But I don't know, even after analyzing all these key statistics, I still have to say, these two are similar. Here's my overview. UPS was first. They started from next to nothing, but slowly built into something big. FedEx came later, but they combined a lot of money with revolutionary ideas and an aggressive attitude. It made for a risky start, but once they found their footing, they were unstoppable. UPS was then forced to keep up and adopt some of these new ideas. They spent the next 40 to 50 years responding to each other's moves. As a result, we now have two similar sized companies that still maintain their specialties, but are more like each other today than they've ever been in the past. That's my perception anyway. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of all this? Aside from all the comparisons, we should recognize that these are two very different success stories. A six man messenger service and a company whose fate may have depended on a hand of blackjack are currently two of the largest companies in existence. Also, I can be here for hours comparing these two, so I did my best in selecting what I thought was the most significant and the most interesting. So if you have anything else to add to the list, feel free. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.